What's happening, everybody? It's Chappelle, and no, Rob is not here. Hell, Sam ain't even here. So I am in complete control of Club Condo today. That's right. I have the controls. Jill is behind the scenes with the actual controls. But for the most part, I am in control of Club Condo this week while Rob and Sam are off doing, well, we'll get into it. And with me to, to talk about all the craziness that's going on on this week of Survivor, I have a special panel. I had to do it like this. I mean, this, I just, I feel like I hit the nail on the head with who you, who you all wanted to hear from. First up, we have never heard her here on Club Condo. I mean, we haven't gotten a lot of podcast guests on anyway, but this top of my list, Maggie Morgan. Maggie, welcome. I am so honored to be one of the people that you invited here when dad is away. This is so exciting. We're throwing a party. Dad yes. is gone. Let's do, let's, let's, let's get into it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Can't wait to get into all of it with you guys. Yes, listen, it's going to be a good time because we also have with us the king of reality TV Twitter. That's right. It's not that other Brian. It's Brian Scully. Scully, what's good? Hello, hello. I'm good. I'm excited to be here. A living fool, not a dead know-it-all. I'm excited to jump into the uh, mess of Survivor and this season as a whole. Yes, um, we're going to get into this week's episode and all the things that come with it. But thank you all for being here as I kind of just go off the rails a little bit and just we're going to vibe this time because, like I said, dad's away. And so, uh, you know, the kids will play. And first of all, let's just talk about where Rob is right now, because Rob has missed some podcasts. Sam rarely misses a podcast. So it had to be a big occasion. And it turns out that this weekend is not well this week is not only the eclipse but also it's Marianne's wedding. And so Rob and Sam are both off doing that. They're in the great country of Canada and they've left us here in the United States without an invite. Uh, Maggie, what happened? Why, why aren't we at the wedding? Um, You know, I think I'm going to have to speak to Marianne about this one. <laughs> I feel very left out. It looks very fun. All of the pictures look amazing. Um, I did just start a new full-time job, so I'm not sure I would have been able to immediately take off of work. But, you know, Marianne might be getting a letter from me, a strongly worded email from me because yes. I have FOMO. Yeah. It looks like everybody from Survivor is here. We're going through, uh, if you're if you're not list, uh, watching this, we're going through a slideshow from Omer's uh, social media. And it looks like you got the, whole, the gangs all there. I think I saw uh franny i saw omer I, we saw there's a carson sighting this soon uh i see people tagged in post uh, is that tori scally that um, is tori with mary <laughs> 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 looks like everyone looking at the eclipse <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's omer that's pretty cool Oh my, oh, my oh, my oh my god! Where's the sun? Oh my god! Oh my god! Never okay. Oh. All right. There's a, okay. A beautiful clip of Marianne and her husband. They're dancing. They're walking down the aisle. Yeah, I got a little FOMO, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. Thanks, Jill. So. Everybody was there for the wedding, it seems. But, Scally, I wouldn't be shocked if people just went to go see the eclipse because those were good <laughs> views of the moon. I saw more of the eclipse than I did the actual wedding. Yeah, a lot of people are already on their way up there, so you may as well stop by Marianne's wedding while you're there. Why not? I love that Marianne <laughs> plans so well that it's like, hmm, what year is there going to be an eclipse? Like, let's get that date <laughs> on the, like, scheduled for my wedding. Because, uh, you know what? I probably, probably found out about a week ago. So the foresight immaculate mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, I think the the eclipse all the the hype around the eclipse just somehow it just missed me Be maybe i was too influenced by marianne's wedding like i completely forgot about the eclipse but everybody else they had the glasses and everything maggie yeah, everybody was ready. I mean, I am like, I was super underprepared. I'm very happy I work at a museum and they had some glasses available. Otherwise, I would have been, you know, try, I would have been not able to go outside because I would have been too tempted to look at the sun, you know. But the thing is, like, Marianne looked so beautiful. She's so radiant in her wedding dress. I'm like, you need some glasses to look at her too. She's shining so beautiful. Yeah. Um, 
I would have loved to get some glasses as well. Maybe you just go to the wedding to get the glasses so that you can experience the eclipse. Cause I, I'm assuming they gave them out for free. It's look, it takes a lot of planning to pull off something like this. Marianne made an eclipse happen just so her wedding would be perfect. And I mean, she, she's my survivor winner of the new era. So, I mean, I'm not shocked at all, Scally. <laughs> yeah, I love that it's you go to either the library, 7-Eleven, or Marianne's wedding to get your eclipse classes. Like, those are the hubs. <laughs> the hubs. <laughs> Look, it's some great, some great views from that wedding. But, y'all, we have to talk about Survivor here. Survivor 46, Maggie, we have not heard you weigh in on this season. There's been a lot of craziness this season, and we've been happy to talk about it on Club Condo. But why don't you give us, catch us up on the Maggie viewing experience. How have you been enjoying Survivor 46? I don't know if I want the smoke, Chappelle. Uh, it's okay. I, I miss Bono too. It's okay. I miss Bono too. It's fine. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but Maggie, what's up? This season has been... It's been long. It's mm -hmm. been six episodes and it feels like it's been <laughs> so many hours that we've been watching this season. Am I wrong? Like, I don't, I'm not trying to get a bunch of survivors from this season tweeting at me, but so they I, I, they, it, they, I, they will. That's why I'm saying I'm not here for smoke, <laughs> but I, it's, it's been a lot of survivor, a lot of backstory, a lot of, of tears, you know, and I have to say, when I watch Survivor and anyone cries at all, I'm like, exactly, period. That's all I would be doing out there is crying and throwing up and wanting, like, and be like, take me home, you know? Um, but it's just been, I feel like hopefully now with this merge, we're going to get some more gameplay. But I really do feel, and maybe it's not the the player's fault at this point. It's just like the rut of these this three tribe format. Um, and I feel like editing wise we're not really watching them talk to each other that much like my roommate Lincoln and I have talked a lot about this like when you watch the old seasons of Survivor you're watching them have conversations I feel like now we watch like 20 seconds of conversation and then hear confessionals where they describe what happened in the conversation and I'm like no I would like to watch them actually talk about this you know Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that's interesting. I haven't really thought about it that way. But yeah, we get a lot of like cutaways, a lot of people talking about things. And then we even get the flashbacks, you know, where they're showing their backstory. But I'm like, remember when they used to just sit around and just say things? You know, it's like we really don't get that. I mean, when we do, Scally, it's 20 minutes of Taylor Swift content. Yeah, that is the thing, because I've been sitting here and I'm like, I like this cast. Like, I really like a lot of people on it. There are so many people that I have connected with, but I was like, why is it not clicking for everyone quite to the mm -hmm. same degree? And I think that Maggie made a really good mm -hmm. point. I think that uh, letting the conversations just breathe a little more rather than like the splice cutting uh, would be really helpful because there are fun people on this cast. Yeah, I mean, you hear us, 46. We love this cast. We love y'all. Thank God. Like, oh my God. Like, please, yes. please. Yes, yes. We love you. We love you. We love you. I just want to hear you talk to each other more. Yes, we love y'all. Mm -hmm. Scala, they're like the X-Men. They jump people every time. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, I, like I do think, I do think it's like, as somebody who watches these shows and like i really like it when a cast gets along like i really prefer it like bb23 is like the best big brother cast in terms of just like they're all still to this day like really good friends and hang out all the time like i really prefer that over the casts where there's like a ton of mess on twitter and stuff after and social media and i do think that the coordinated uh like cast come together against people they deem enemies is a sign that like there's a group chat that they're all in where they where they're chatting and you know plotting maybe <laughs> yeah yeah i do wonder if everyone's in that group chat <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> there might be side group chats is my little concern there <laughs> yeah i i can well, see it i <laughs> it's a little it's a little drama it's a little drama out there there's drama out there somewhere maggie <laughs> I, like I said, I'm not here for the smoke. I'm just trying to, I, I will talk about what's on the screen and what I've seen with my own two eyes, you know? <laughs> okay. So let's get into some of the niceness of these uh, survivor players. Let's talk about the episode. It starts off with um, Mariah who voted incorrectly last round. You all, she, she uh, voted for Ben. Uh, we saw that she was the only one on the wrong side of the vote. And then she had a very intense meeting with HR. Um, they were like, you know, 
Mariah, whether you wrote my name down or, you know, did write my name, it, it doesn't matter. We still care about you. You're valuable in this tribe. It was like she got to like a pip or something like that, Maggie. Like, a, okay, here's the good things you're, the things you're good at. We, yes, we, we're reprimanding you, but you're still a part of this family. It felt very professional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much like the compliment sandwich or like, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's 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 very like she very much was lulled into that sense of like, OK, well, we'll still be a tribe. And I, I heard on the know-it-alls Rob talking about how he felt like she really did play it correctly. And I saw his point, but I also I don't know. I I, I don't know. I'm, I've been going back and forth with it the whole time, like what I would have done if I was in that scenario. And I think perhaps what I would have done is try and find somebody who I could tell was really, really integrated on the other tribes and give them the true tea. Like, mm -hmm. and be like, I'm only really telling you this. Like, I really like you. I got pushed out of the vote last time. I'm feeling horrible. <laughs> Will you help yeah. me? You know, like I'm feeling pretty bad because mm -hmm. that's a way to stroke somebody's eat. So, and that's the problem, right? Is that when you don't know what's been going on on these other tribes, it's not like you can just easily come in and be like, obviously they have the most power. But I do think that there's obviously people who are social who, you know, like somebody like Tevin, I feel like I would be able to come in and just be like, we need to talk here. Um, help me. And that's a great way to, you know, stroke somebody's ego, make them think that they have you and also sort of lay the groundwork to be like, ah, it's not all, it's not all great. I can't put my faith in these people because they just stabbed me in the back last time. Right. Scally, did, did Mariah even have a place to land? I mean, you go, if Mariah goes to these tribe mates and says, listen, I'm a number for you. And then they look around and say, well, Liz is here. We already got a Mariah and she's got money. <laughs> like we, we got oh, yeah. Mariah at home. She can do more for us after the season. Um, we, <laughs> that's the problem is I think that normally uh, the way of, let's say, like a Venus where you go in and are just like, let me throw everything to the wind. I want to take my 1%, screw that, my winner chances of 1%. Let me go ahead and like try to, you know, roll the dice and end up with a much larger piece of that pie. But in the new era, it is currently seeming like it is just like get through the mergatory, get through like one or two votes, and then that's where you try. So I see why Mariah played it the way that she did. Yeah, you brought up okay. Venus and... Oh yeah, go ahead, Maggie. No, I just... <laughs> just having trouble here with people being like, well, in the new era, this is how you have to play it. Because... I'm sorry, in the early versions of Survivor, people came in and they're like, well, this is Survivor. This is just how you have to play it. And then people were like, no, and made a brand new strategy and moved the game forward. Like, I don't know that the right thing to do is go in and be like, well, this is just the way it is now because of the game conventions and like the whole point and the players that we really like to see are adaptable and creative, like be creative in these situations. And yes, in the seasons like 41 and 42, it was so brand new that people had no idea what to expect. And that's also, I think why we saw people get really like a lot more creative in those seasons than in seasons, like the mo more recent ones. But like, I would have loved to have seen Mariah come in and be like, okay, this is my plan. I'm going to stay with them. Like, yes, Kumbaya, amazing. And then I'm going to get one person or like come up with something exciting and different. Like that's what every single, Suri came in in Panama and did some, you know, every single person who were like there an emergent game player came in and were adaptable and creative. So I'm not sure that I really love the arguments of like, I know in this version of Suri, Forever, we have to do it this way because that's not true in any game ever. You don't have to do anything anyway. Of course, there are certain things that are more wise than other things, but like I I would really I think maybe that's what I'm missing right now in this season mm. is like creativity from these people. I feel like I've seen it all before, like five times over at this point. And I think maybe that's why I'm like, it's been so like a long season. I feel like I'm watching, I'm watching the Tika three happen on this purple tribe. I'm watching, you, you know what I mean? I I'm, I'm waiting for something to surprise me and excite me. 
Yeah, no, that's that's real because yeah, it's Mariah tried something that I think is pretty unconventional. Just to like, mm -hmm. I'll just be at the bottom and hope for the best. It, like it's different for sure, but uh, it's what? not the most effective. Chicago. That's not different. <laughs> that's what every boot, early boot of Survivor does. Not that Mariah was, is yeah. an early boot. Like she almost finished yeah. the merge. But if we're talking like old school Survivor, old school. yeah, like, that's back in the day. Of, like. Yeah, like Marquesas. Think of Amazon. Like everybody who got voted out, like their ally got voted out and they were left out of the vote was like, please don't do that to me. And people were like, we won't do that to you. You know what I mean? Like exactly what happened to Mariah. So I, I don't think that that's like that new. I think what she did at Tribal was interesting. Mm -hmm. And I would have loved to see her be a little braver and do that earlier. But I... I don't even know if braver is the correct term. I Sorry, I feel like I've been ranting for so long. No, no. no. I liked your point, especially though, Maggie, where you said that like going to one person rather than this group, because I feel like there was a lot of just people throwing ideas in this episode out in big group conversations where they would have mm -hmm. been much better targeted, like going to talk to one or two specific people. Because I think that often in a cast that plays really slow, like the person who like takes off running is the one who's going to do well. In a cast that plays really fast, the one who lets everyone else crash into each other and like sits mm -hmm. and waits for to pick up the pieces is going to do well. And I think often like somewhere in the middle is the right move and unfortunately mm -hmm. it doesn't show on tv at least that mariah was like all right i'm going to publicly look like i am sitting back and like going along for the flow but let mm -hmm. me okay why isn't this like you know maybe venus has a point maybe we should go for charlie maybe we should do something else maybe i am not at the top of uh -huh. my tribe maybe i you know i think privately is where you need to start playing that game yeah mm -hmm. and i think I also think that maybe this is just like my big brother brain shining through because it's always to me, it's like, if you are not in that big alliance, figure out who runs it and make, make yourself their indispensable side piece. Like if they're not going to include you in the alliance, like, and that's done like, okay, Tyler Crispin, you, I'm, I'm your Sam. You know what I mean? Like that, that is what you have to do. And so it's, it's so hard being out there for maybe two hours after this mergatory, like, challenge and all of that like i'm not saying that it's an easy task look mm -hmm. we all know i would not do well on survivor for a singular day but <laughs> um like i i do think that there's survivor sometimes it the thing about survivor is that conventionally it doesn't really reward the people who stick their neck out it rewards mm. the people who play like a Sandra game, you know, sort of like they, it doesn't reward the Machiavellian gameplay. It, it, it awards more passive gameplay and you can still be passive and active if you are shoving somebody else in front of you and being like, take all the bullets for me, like, please. And I think that if Mariah had just found like gone to Hunter or gone to Tevin or even gone to Q, like Q at this point is running things. It looks like, I think that if she had found a way in, in, in that sense, maybe that could have been better. I don't, I don't know. Well, I'm glad you bring that up because I felt like Mariah did try and that she had some obstacles. Let's talk about the Q thing. Now, this was a hot topic, of course, because uh, we see Mariah talking to Q and they're having a discussion about their favorite Survivor players from the past. Now, we see that uh, in her exit interviews, Mariah said that Q was talking about his Survivor player and his favorite player of the past was Jeremy Collins. And so Mariah felt like, hey, if I throw out a non-winner that I could like relate to kind of like personally, that should be fine. But she threw out Aubrey. And this seemingly just closes the door in her face when it comes to being able to work with Q because he doesn't like that. He says, Aubrey's setting people up left and right. Scotty, what's the right answer here? What are you supposed to say in this moment? I mean, this is so hard because I would love to say Natalie Cole, but I don't think like, they're going to have any <laughs> understanding of who that reference is. Scotty, so... can, I can I have your jacket? Can I have your jacket? Scotty. Like, you want to go for that big character that they're going to remember? I've seen a lot of people throwing out an idea of maybe a coach. The problem is, do people now like know who coach is that we're benching the series? That is kind of another concern of like, wow, they know players I've never even heard of <laughs> is another concern. Mm -hmm. I think that also, and again, like I'm, I really don't blame Mariah for this. She had known Q for about 16 seconds, but like, I think that, when you're talking to somebody and th if this is a situation where 
you know, you want to be truthful, you want to bond, but if it's somebody who you feel like maybe has a lot of social capital and like you want to suck up to them, maybe the answer is like read that he said Jeremy Collins and be like, Mm -hmm. you know, I really love Natalie. She's my favorite. Like they were, you know how they were in lockstep? Like I think that that's sort of the move is whoever you're – the person that you're talking to, whoever they say that their favorite player was, you just happen to say their closest ally or like <laughs> dear friend. Like you like Denise, that's so crazy. I like Malcolm. I oh my gosh. Malcolm. Oh my God. You yeah. like Parvati? No, that- oh my gosh. I love Amanda Kimmel. That's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an Alexis Maxwell stan. Oh my God. Oh um- my God. Totally. <laughs> Uh, yeah okay this was a hot topic to where people t- took it to your streets scally they were on twitter and we got a tweet from a uh, rumored billionaire liz wilcox Ooh. all right and liz said uh okay the tweet is from omer and it says this is why if anyone asks me my favorite player i always and forever say wendy deschmidt kohoff um who maggie i'd say people probably don't remember I don't even. I'm on a podcast and I don't remember who that is. <laughs> is she the Maggie's one? Like, no, no, that she's person the first, doesn't exist. First, first person voted off of Nicaragua. Yay! 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 <laughs> okay, I'm not a, that foolish. A true know it all. A true know it all. <laughs> but, but but Liz's response was, "I told people who my fans were Coach and Philip Scally. How's that?" Honestly, okay. it's decent because I was kind of thinking Bono. <laughs> <laughs> like, remember that guy y'all voted out earlier? Yeah. I want to be like him. That's that was my one. number one. Um, <laughs> yeah, just pick someone with that's like a really big personality on the show and not necessarily seen as a huge strategist, uh, whether fair or not. I think that's definitely the move. I also mm-hmm. like, I think that it depends on how you explain it. Like, why do you like Coach and Philip? I would have be truthful in my explanation of it, which is if I'm ever watching television, reality television specifically, I would like people on my screen who in my head, I think, where did they find this person? I can't believe this is a real person. So coach and Philip absolutely fall into that category as does Banu. You know what I mean? Like um, Wendy also, uh, Omer's pick, you know, like I think that that's a great pick if you got the reasoning to back it up. And I do think that if I was on Liz's tribe, I I would believe it if she was like, my favorites are Coach and Philip. I would be like, that tracks. Yeah, that's a good one. I wonder if it gets too cute though, where you say it's Coach and Philip and they're like, all right. Like, cause, cause (laughs) I I liked Philip and I liked Coach. Are there anybody's favorite survivor player? Like, really? Okay. Coach, yes, definitely. When I watched Heroes Villains and the first five seconds he was doing Coach Chi in the helicopter, I still can laugh about that <laughs> to this day. <laughs> I can't stop laughing when I think about it. Like, absolutely, yes. But I know what you mean. It's like if you've dedicated all of this time and energy to the show, you're watching it for more than just people like Coach and Philip. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, there are still people who will constantly answer, and I think this actually would probably be a pretty decent answer. Go with Rupert. Rupert is someone who yes. is all about loyalty, yeah. the big personality. Like, this is the start of the archetype. He's super well known. And just like, that's where I started. That's where I ended. Rupert's my favorite still. Mm-hmm. So, Skyler, if this in 47, if 47 was a returnee season, you're picking Rupert as your this week, this person will not be voted off of Survivor 47. <laughs> That's not where I'm picking. But... <laughs> <laughs> We're praying for Amanda oh. Kimmel to come back. <laughs> Who, who's the most obscure person you would say is one of your faves, Scally, just off the top Ooh. of your head? Um, let's go. I was talking about with... if you were trying to stump Q and it had to be one of your faves. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Charlie from Gabon. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fan. That's, pa- that's pandering to Maggie. That's all that is. <laughs> it is. I would probably go with someone from Vanuatu, like Scout in Vanuatu for those just brutal confessionals when they oh, the chicken bones when they were like we brought you back chicken bones for you to suck yeah. on for all the men. That's who I would go with. Dr. Eve from Nicaragua. That's who I'm going to. Or Dr. Jill. Is it Jill? Yeah. <laughs> which one Jill? of them? Uh, Jill or Eve. Which Dr. one of them two? <laughs> who's, the one, who, who's the one who put the the shoes in the water and then felt guilty oh, about it and took uh, them out? Holly. 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 Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, think you can, I think you get away with anything from Nicaragua. Like you could say sash and nobody would care. You know? Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's fine. What about Bruce from <laughs> Panama who got... 
uh, oh, yeah. airlifted <laughs> for being backed up. I feel you. Very that would happen to me. <laughs> or, just, or or Bob Dog, who did not get airlifted because he wasn't backed up and he used Cassidy Charmin as a, an actual toilet. Um, yeah, <laughs> that guy. Oh, oh my gosh, I forgot about this. <laughs> Uh, he's kicked out of club condo he's not allowed in he can't come in no nasty Nasty. (laughs) okay no so i thought i thought that was a fun exchange because again you know she wasn't really it didn't feel like she was saying oh i want to play like aubrey i i think you know aubrey is a great survivor player we've seen her do amazing things in survivor but also you know i think woman with glasses that seems kind of nerdy. Like, I felt like she was just saying, like, look at my natural, like, you know, archetype. This is somebody who I saw play the game. They did fairly well multiple times, and they kind of remind me of me. I don't think she was saying, you know, like, I, I'm about to decimate your tribe from, you know, and I'm pretending to have a panic attack or something like that. So, you know, like, it just felt like Q heard it, and it was like confirmation bias. He never wanted to play with her anyway. And the moment, mm-hmm. I think the moment she loses Q's galley, I don't think she can get in with that threesome of Yanu, Tiffany, and Kenzie. Mm-hmm. No. And that's the thing is that I think that he was probably the like gate that she needed to get through. Uh, because when he is going to everyone else and yelling like she's Aubrey geeky, like as if it's a level of geeky that she is. Uh, <laughs> Say when. Which, rude. That is rude, Q. Oh my God. Okay. If someone asks you your geekiest survivor player, Maggie, you have to answer who? Oh gosh, I don't know. Uh, Cochrane. Yeah. <laughs> Rob says, you know, for me. I'm sorry. Uh, you gotta go. You gotta go to the first of the archetypes, okay? He's, he's really been lately trying to release that from his like the fact that he, <laughs> he coming after people for being on stream and naming survivor players. Rob, I watched your season like five times. Don't act like that was not you. Come on. <laughs> Rewriting history on- here. On a scale yeah. from Aubrey to Rob Sesternino, how geeky are you? Is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the other way around. It's <laughs> from Rob to Aubrey. Just because, it, it, just because Rob does not have glasses does not mean that he was not a survivor nerd, okay? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know they wanted him to wear glasses last time. And he just, just like, he's like, I don't. They're like, are you sure? Are you positive you don't wear glasses? You um, seem like so- the type of guy who would wear glasses. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to typecast you, sir. Right, put the glasses on. Let's just see how they look on your face. <laughs> I was like, I gotta see it. I gotta see what it. What about blue um, light? Do you need blue <laughs> light glasses on Survivor? Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Um, some some Survivor players have been sa- taking exception to this. Um, specifically, Brando, who Rob has you know pretty much called out at every turn <laughs> for being too nerdy and needing to leave the house. Uh, so yeah, up on our screen, thanks, Jill. We have um, a tweet from Brando that says, "Found out I caught strays on RHAP again during this week's Know It Alls." Uh, RHAP, we're over. And uh, yeah, he has this uh, friendship ended with RHAP now on fire with Jeff Probst as my best friend. Um, this is, this is pretty good. I, I I will say this. Yeah, I think Rob has forgotten how far we've come. You know, like when he, when he was there, he was like the nerdy outcast. You know, and he worked himself in because because Rob is charismatic. I mean, you give the guy some time and he'll work. He'll work his way in. But there, you don't get Cochran without starting at Rob. You know, like there, like it, it, there are levels. There- there was a full confessional from Roger in Rob's season where he was just dunking on Rob and was like, this kid's 23 and does karaoke in his mom's basement. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Rob is the OG, okay? <laughs> yes. The man can name every Survivor player, Scally. Every last one. I think, listen, I cannot, I'm not judging him because I can name a lot of Survivor players. I think after you can name 30, I think you're a nerdy survivor geek territory. I really do. I think if you can name complete a uh, complete season of cast members, if you got one under your belt, I'm sorry. I, I think you're a survivor nerd. Rob, you have to count your days. This is it. This is your take. Yeah. I honestly like, think it might be lower if first and last name. <laughs> like if you know the <laughs> last names of the players, you better start yeah. looking at <laughs> Yeah, and there even gets to the point where, like I said, I just started describing people. I'm like, the one who put the shoes in the water. Um, mm-hmm. The one who was voted out first, you know, it's like, I can see their face, but I, I can't give you. And you know what, Rob? Take your place. You are you are our king. 
Okay. Yeah. You have led us into battle all of these years. We are we are employed because of you. Okay. Don't don't try to denounce it. Own it. Yeah. yeah. We love you for it. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. So uh back to the episode, right? Um, we talked about how 46 is they're they're a little plexi, they like to fight a little bit online, but they are fighting amongst themselves in very interesting ways that we haven't seen on Survivor before. I cannot remember the last time, Scally, that two Survivor players were actively having a, a argument while someone else was just finding an idol, what looks like feet away. Uh, we have to talk about Venus and Soda. Now, I haven't got y'all's takes on them, but I have to know, Maggie, we started with, here's the trophy. Oh, she snatched the trophy from me. We've now got to Mergatory, and they are not working together. What's going on? Chappelle, I'm going to be honest. If I was on Survivor... Uh, there could be clips of me throwing up, <laughs> rolling around in the mud, falling flat on my face, breaking every bone in my body. Like there could be a, a full confessional of me talking about aqua dumping. And I still don't think I would be as mortified as if there were those clips of me snatching that idol. <laughs> that, that was primal. You know, that was like, give it to me. It is my, like, oh my gosh. Watching those clips, I w I literally like, you know, head under covers level of, oh, but it's so good. It's so juicy. I can't wait to hear what she has to say about it after the season. Because like, I mean, that it, that's going to be the reaction image that I have for this season. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that, you know what I mean? Like, it's so good. And also it really makes you be like, yeah, Venus, I get it. You know, <laughs> because, because that's crazy. That is absolutely wild. Um, oh, it's so, it's so good. It's honestly, like I said, it's so good that it's like a little mortifying to me. Like I, mm -hmm. I'm a little bit like, oh no, this is like real. Yeah. <laughs> that's Scotty, bad. Scott, this is one hell of a gif. I'm obsessed with it. Um, I wanted a compilation <laughs> of every single week. I was really yes. hoping. And like, not because I think it's, you know, funny or because I want it to happen to Venus. I just think it is so absurd. Like, I want Venus to win individual immunity. And so does like, all right, let's pass that around. <laughs> Give it to like, me. We're passing that thing around. <laughs> Jeff goes to put it on her neck and just so just like, I got it, Jeff. It's fine. <laughs> like, no, no. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love drama and I love silliness and like that is just it's so stupid but like it's yes. so funny <laughs> that's that's what it is it's the lowest stakes drama like because it really is so dramatic and for what for what mm -hmm. yes. it's brilliant <laughs> and, and I do I still stand by I just think it's a misunderstanding I don't think Soda was actively trying to do this because like like you said no. Maggie why would you want to see this on TV no that's what I'm saying like and I I also am saying, like, I don't put it past myself to be sleep deprived, so excited that I won caught up in the moment and yeah. caught up in the moment and tried. To, but like, that's what I'm saying. It's it's so relatable at, from people who love Survivor and are hammy and want to be on TV and probably like so tired, but so like not good, no. <laughs> so dramatic. My level of observation more. on a full stomach and 18 hours of sleep is still really bad. So to <laughs> be starving yes. and sleep deprived on an island, I'm not picking up on any social cues. Yes. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's why this game is not for me. My spatial awareness is just not there. I think that I would just be like, there it is. Idol one. Yay. You know? <laughs> yeah. I cannot judge these people at all because I am clumsy. And I'm also annoying. And I know this about me. And so if you put me on television and take away all the things that people that make me tolerable. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a monster. Mm -hmm. I'm your next yeah. villain. It's me. I'm, yes, the, I'm the drama. That's that's exactly what I say about Survivor. And that's why I'm always like, cry on TV. I'm not going to fault anybody for crying. You're starving. When I haven't had lunch, I could, I start crying by 4 p.m. Because I'm like, I'm just so hungry. You know, like I do what you got to do. But oh, man, it's it's juicy. That one's juicy. Yeah, I just felt like it was a communication breakdown. But sadly, uh, I think Venus did not. We saw Venus fighting for her life in this episode. I mean, it was really, it seemed like a coin toss between Venus and Mariah that just worked out in Venus's favor. But Venus then took to Twitter. And uh, the tweets have now been deleted, y'all, <laughs> conveniently. Uh, but Scally, Ooh. 
Uh, I know you've seen the tweet, Scally. Uh, so <laughs> I, I'm not even going to ask. But if you could just give us to the TLDR, please, of what Venus had to say about all of this. Oh, my God. There's been a lot. Like, which all of this is the thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, take us uh, to know, it. Uh, Venus was, you know, not really thrilled with how this went for her. And I think that we see that in the edit. Uh, obviously, she's frustrated because usually people on the bottom would be picked up from another alliance. And instead, she is, like, kept there. And so it is talked about how it was super frustrating. And, like, maybe people just don't like a strong woman because other players maybe have gotten to do interviews. And uh, it was a whole lot of mess with Venus. Uh, but it was good mess. Yes. Um, she had a lot to say. I mean, there was a good tweet thread and like, I wasn't even tapped in. I was not paying attention. And then people were like, no, you have to see Venus. She's on there. And I'm, Venus is a perfect reality TV oh. player so far. Like, a, wow. like when you want reality TV casting, you want Venus. You want someone who's going to say the things. They're going to go to Twitter with the things as well. And my favorite thing about Venus, Maggie, is that her confessionals sounds like Venus has this all wrapped up. She's going to win the game. She's like, oh, no, wait until you see what I have in store for you at the merge. I'm like, yes, Venus, show us. And show us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I look, I completely agree with you. She is perfect reality TV perfect. casting. She's amazing. I want to see her on every single show. I love her. She's the only person from this season that I followed on Instagram so far. Um, but... Venus, I'm going to need you to fake it a little more. This is a social mm. game. You can't be coming back from immunity challenges where everybody just won and is all hyped up and start being all upset about somebody running over your toe. I agree with you. They should not have run over your toe. They should have listened to you. But the whole point of these shows is to be fake as hell while you're talking <laughs> to people. Like, just be fake. Get in your confessional. Yeah. And you can say, and then they ran over my toe. And then we will be like, queen, 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 queen. But you, you can't come back when everybody's all excited and be like, no one celebrate. We have to talk about my toe. Like, <laughs> you know, you got, obviously that is a gross exaggeration of what happened. But yeah. like, I, I, if I'm wanting her success in the game, I'm saying, Venus, put on that smile and fake it. But mm -hmm. if I'm wanting my entertainment, I'm saying, keep going, Venus. Do exactly what you're doing. Don't change a singular thing. Yes. Ah, man. Such a good player. I, I mean, character. I will say that. I guess I will see. We will see if she's a good player because I think Maggie has a point. I think a, a great survivor player either is in complete control and doesn't have to deal with this nonsense. So normally straight white man, right? Or, mm -hmm. or, or you put, you are coming from like a marginalized community where you have to now fight for these things, but you do take control at some point. Right. And so not Three. saying that she yeah, exactly. We've seen it time and time again where people mm -hmm. who are coming in, and I, when I say marginalized, I even just mean, like, if you're a woman who is not looked at as a strong asset physically, right? Because we've seen that time and time again, we got to vote somebody out. Let's keep the tribe strong by voting off this woman. We don't know what her actual skills are. I mean, we've seen Olympic swimmers voted off first, Scally. Like, <laughs> Katrina Racky is an all-time Olympic swimmer, and they were like, bah, because you're a woman. I'm just saying, oh, no, an older woman. I'm sorry, there was more. But, you know, I just really feel like <laughs> if you give How people old time... How old is an older, older woman than the rest is, of Is it them, giving cause... older woman tribe from Panama? Yeah, look, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> years old, an older woman tribe. Just, look, just for Saria, I think she was, what, 32? Um, <laughs> yeah, my, my point, Scally, is if you give somebody time to cook, maybe they are a good survivor player. They just need a little wiggle room. Yeah, because the thing, there's been so much of, and I think especially in the past, it would be like, all right, if everyone else has an issue, then like maybe you're the problem. But I think we've seen a lot of seasons where that might have been disproved, in, especially maybe a season or two where there's live feeds to prove that's the case. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so we don't know necessarily. I do think that like the point of faking it like could be helpful in terms of a gameplay perspective. Um, but as a character, Venus has been so fun. I mean, even when she's just on Twitter being like, boring vote, boring. <laughs> like, I'm here for it. <laughs> She tweets just like me, you know, <laughs> just like tomato, <laughs> tomato. Um, no, v Venus is perfect. She's she's yeah. giving like Mother Quake, you know, all of the tweets, all of the tweets. <laughs> it's it's giving 
Yes, I'm here yeah. for this. Somewhere, uh -huh. Lavina is sh literally shaking right now. <laughs> she we got because we're talking about uh, Venus in, in such a good light, honestly, because she deserves it. She's such fun TV, but I mean, just mm -hmm. seeing her in fights in the middle of like, and I say fights, but like arguments, survivor fights, if you will, in the middle of Hunter fighting an idol, you just it's just oh so good. It's so mm -hmm. good. But we do have more tweets. So uh, we saw a tweet about Survivor 46 cast from Carla from Survivor 43, right? There That's Gabe Lucy. Yeah, okay, all right. It's, you know, Not defining so, it that way. <laughs> so, look, sometimes I forget that uh, we, we didn't have, uh, you know, a gap season, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I had to remind myself that that happened. But Carla tweets, based off my social media timelines, I volunteered to host the 46th finale reunion, a la Jerry Springer, who's in? And uh, we even get a response from somebody it's rumored billionaire Liz Wilcox. She says, tell me when and where. I got things to say. Scally, Ooh. I'm starting to think Liz is a little under-edited. What, what's Liz got to say about all of this? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I was like, put some Liz confessionals in there. <laughs> like, who do we have to vote out to get Liz on screen? Because I Mariah. want to hear what she has to say. <laughs> we voted out Mariah last week, Scally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that she didn't say, tell me when and where Liz has things to say. Yes. <laughs> Look, this woman makes plenty of money, okay? She didn't even send this tweet. I, I guarantee you it was some type of admin. She does not waste her time with Twitter <laughs> fingers. Yeah, she pays people to do this. But I would love to see. You know, we don't really get our reunions anymore. That's not fun. Um, And I know, and I think this season might be why. I think this season kind of will encapsulate what it looks like when you have a Survivor season that's very contentious. And then we also add an additional two-hour special where they've gone back and watched all the horrible things they said about each other, Maggie. Um, I feel like this 46 reunion would go down in history as one of the best Survivor reunions, personally. Well, this cast is very, like, the, the, the feelings are strong with this cast. Like, that's one thing you can say about this cast. Like, they got some feelings that they feel about mm -hmm. things. They, mm -hmm. They've got opinions, and they've got... Things to say. Um, so, yeah. I, I mean, I think it would be messy. I think that I would be watching through my hands like this. You know, I, I would be so nervous the whole time. Um, but, yeah. I, I, I'm I fascinated after the season's over. I, I can't wait to hear some of these exit interviews. That's, that's what I'm mm -hmm. most intrigued by. Yes. Uh, Scally, Survivor All-Stars Part 2, right? Ooh, I'm ready. Uh, look, I'm already <laughs> mourning the content that we're missing out on. <laughs> like the memes, mm -hmm. all of the like different social media presences uh, and reactions that we could have had to this reunion could have been so fun. I think this cast would have brought it. Yeah, no, this would have been quality TV content, but we don't get it. We don't. They've taken the reunions from us. And as much as I would love a, a, little, a little extra episode of drama, I hate to say that they're they're probably right to do it. You know, like it's, it's probably, there's nothing really good comes from the reunion. It's I, I have to confess that, you know, my viewing experience of Survivor is I started season one, watched all the way in order through season 20. And never once did I sit through the entirety of a Survivor reunion. What? Never wow. once. Mm -hmm. oh my God, I would I, I so would find references. out who won. <laughs> I would find out who won and be shocked every time because I wasn't completely unspoiled for all of Survivor, basically. I would find out who won, be shocked, and then want to talk about it. So I'd start talking about it and talk through half the reunion. <laughs> Sc <laughs> Maggie, this is egregious. Uh, Scally, she might have missed Kat Ederson telling us all that she got implants. Yes, there's so many things I that did. need to be talked about I here. Did. What is that? <laughs> uh, oh so no, many, Maggie, we don't have time for that one. <laughs> uh, like so many unhinged Jeff Probst questions. Like there are so many things that need to be discussed. Yeah, Maggie, I I believe and Scotty, check me if I'm wrong, but I believe Kat was answering a question. Was like, well, Jeff, I've made a few changes in the off season. Oh, you I know, have seen this. a few changes. Because she was with sure Hayden. Hayden doesn't stray to. I was like, ah! <laughs> Jeff was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I also did see the reunion where that girl kissed Jeff Probst on the mouth, and he did not like it. 
Mm, no. He yeah. did not like it. Mm. Y- yeah. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Scotty, what's the most embarrassing moment you've seen on live TV? Oh my god. Oh, there's too many to count. Um <laughs> uh, God. Um a reunion moment. I'm thinking back to some specific questions that were asked at the reunion that I think probably uh are good to not be what? said. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We need to talk about what Natalie just commented. What season is that from? What's going on? Oh, China. okay. So in the in the comments, we have a, a, a comment from natalie it says can't believe you miss jeff asking people if, if they're still virgins <laughs> um yeah survivor china uh Scott, i believe what? that's your favorite season it's my favorite season that wasn't the worst question asked at the survivor <laughs> china reunion there was by far a worse question that was asked so uh, <laughs> i'll tell you off pod um yeah <laughs> it, is Wait, legitimately, it was on the show it's legitimately offensive um so we are going to <laughs> talk about it then Oh my gosh. Scott, I'm sorry. Yes, that was embarrassing, but also, isn't that a survivor love story that lasted for a very long time and then recently ended potentially? Yeah. Um, maybe we shouldn't talk about how time is like. in Club Condo Chappelle. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, we'll run it back, run it back. We we I did look, I did not know it was going that direction, but look, here we are. Um mm. it gets real sometime on the reunion special. So again. Maybe they've taken it away for us for for our own good. Maybe we don't need that because again, they, these casts they see each other all the time. That's another thing that might have been that might have changed. The social media has made the world so much smaller. We have so many watch parties, RTP live events, uh, random Jordan Kalish watch parties. Of course, Bryce and Win present. These people see each other everywhere. And I think I'm gonna have to just start going to all of them because now if a fight breaks out, I'm not saying I want a fight to break out, but I would like to see it. Like I'm a watch, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, through you never like know this. what's gonna happen at one of these events. You know, yeah. Chappelle always has his, his binoculars <laughs> out. He's looking. All right, <laughs> um, <I'm back>. All <laughs> right. we're changing the subject. No, no. <laughs> if only no, there was no. a place where they all might be for the finale. That would be so interesting. <laughs> right. Books flight, you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, there, there would probably need a referee. I just, I would not want to see that episode of Jerry Springer. I mean, I would. But again, we, we like it when the cast likes each other. We really do. And so there are definitely some people who are warmer on other people. Like, I have to imagine after the season's over, we're going to see a lot of Banu hanging out with everybody, Maggie. Oh, definitely. You love he Banu. Came to win a, he came to win a million hearts. He's got to start <laughs> with 23 people on a season. <laughs> how, how many did he win while he was on the season's galley? Uh, two maybe <laughs> generously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the Ponderosa went great. Um, but you know, mm-hmm. I did Bono a... win your heart, Skelly? Oh, big time. Maybe yes. I, like, while he was on the show, I was like favorite person on the show. There's not a question. Um, <laughs> like really? I, yeah, I enjoy. I watch these shows for personalities, and there was a lot of personality that Bono had to give. So uh, mm-hmm. I was really enjoying. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll we'll put a pin in that and come back to that later on because I have a question okay. about some of Scotty's tweets now. Um, mm-hmm. Let's talk about the immunity challenge. Uh, Scotty, tribal immunity is no more, and that's a shock to Soda. <laughs> she said, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> she wanted the she wanted the idol, man. Look, she thought this was Thailand. <laughs> Like, okay. imagine, yeah, she's only watched Thailand before. <laughs> she, she, okay, so she was obviously reacting to this is mergatory. We're about to split the tribes in half, and there will, you know, one of them. I mean, she wasn't wrong. One of them will be immune, essentially. But it was her reaction that what that may that may be like it made me laugh because Jeff said, "Are you new?" And I thought, "What is that about, Jeff? When did you become?" I mean, we had nice Jeff. I think nasty Jeff is back, Maggie. Whoa. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. He's like, are you new here? I was like, whoa. Maybe sassy Jeff. Yeah, sassy Jeff. I don't know if he's quite nasty Jeff. It sounds like maybe he was doing that at the reunion asking people. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. pictures from the uh, Vanuatu Ponderosa. <laughs> no! Okay. Woo, we are off the rails, y'all. Uh, <laughs> it's because Rob's away. It's because Rob's away. <laughs> yes. I mean, again, Soda wasn't wrong. We have Mergatory all over again. People have been weighing in on if this is a good twist, a bad twist. Scally, with your professional opinion, 
What do you think about Mergatory? And specifically, what do you think about what happened this time? It's not my favorite. Um, mm. I think that then, like it, it's one of the least offensive twists in its current iteration. Like I understand why it happens for TV purposes in terms of like making a easier narrative to tell. Um, but like, don't they want fun, exciting things to happen? So I don't know if that is necessarily what they should be going for. Uh, so, uh, so I understand its utility and I think there are ways to fix it, but like, yeah, I'm still not happy it's here. Mm -hmm. What, what, what is, um, I guess what's the most fun and exciting thing, Maggie, about all the women and Charlie being on one side and then <laughs> all the strong men and Kenzie being on the other side? Everything about that's so exciting. It's so amazing. See, so great. That so potentially great. all the women and Charlie could be safe is the exciting thing. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back the hourglass. Bring back the hourglass. I have a crazy thought. Okay. What if? We just merged like normal. <laughs> and gave one person immunity. Hmm. What if? A la, I don't know, roughly 20 seasons prior to this, you know? Uh, roughly 40 least, seasons prior yeah, to this? Years. <laughs> yeah, 20 years of, of gameplay. Go yeah, down the like, drain, I, really. I kind of don't know what the point of having all those people safe is. And, like, and if you don't want to be in three tribes anymore... Put them in two tribes for one vote. Uh -huh. Like yeah. I that that always and you know, like people got twist screwed out of that. Like I still justice in Fiji for Michelle. She I, she is the girl who I think got twist screwed the hardest, only to be met by her predecessor Sri Fields. But like <laughs> I I mean, she got put on a tribe with none of her allies and got voted out. But like that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. And I think that they should absolutely, if they're gonna do this twist, like why don't you just make it two tribes? You know, it does feel like almost like a tribe swap going wrong, you know, because they do yeah. they mix them up, they have a competition, and then they send them all the tribal council to, to pick but on then, the people who weren't yeah. strong enough to beat them. But then everybody gets to vote, which is the that is the key issue here. Like if you split them up into two tribes, then just the losers vote amongst themselves. And I do think like in that situation, Charlie might have been in trouble. Yeah, yeah. No, Venus was pushing. For Charlie to go home, and because she felt like a, a man needed to go home in that spot, and mm -hmm. honestly, Venus was playing very hard. I, I could see where Venus was going. She's like, "Well, if we allow them to just pick us off, we're going to get picked off." So yeah, I think it would have been bad for Charlie had they actually done a typical swap situation, mm -hmm. and this is just where they landed. But this is mergatory, Scally. This person doesn't even get to make the jury. Oh, which is so brutal. I mean, if Venus goes here and she's not at that little like reunion show that they have after and can't like speak even more openly, that's a huge miss for the season because, mm -hmm. you know, even the 1% that she's been holding back now, uh, we're missing out on. So I am worried about who ends up going here. Sadly for Mariah, uh, we do have a spare. So that is unfortunate, <laughs> but, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, if I was voted out of my favorite show, and somebody was like, well, there's a spare of her. I would be like. <laughs> <laughs> we got rich Mariah at home, okay? I'm just saying we got we got that, options. That is hysterical, both of you. No, th that is too funny. I want the spray bottle. That is absolutely <laughs> Not the spray bottle. Um, <laughs> So, yes, at the end of this, of course, you know, there are people who we get to see come back and you know, the jury members, uh, but we are one vote away from the jury, right? So we still have the last uh, the last split vote where I think it's one person goes and they don't make the jury. The next person goes and they do make the jury. Seeing Venus go right before the jury just feels wrong, Scott. Like I feel like the show, at that point, why are you playing with my emotions? This is so brutal because especially you put it in the position and I don't think that anyone took it last season. I'm very curious to see if it happens here where like, let's say Tevin is the last person up on his side. It's like, I could drop now and make sure that Venus is not on the jury. That seems like a really good thing for me to do. <laughs> I already have immunity. I could not eat one sandwich and guarantee that Venus doesn't get a say at the end. So that's even scarier. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, but I need her on the jury. I do, Maggie. I need I need all the people who are who are potentially going to throw a slice of pizza at the uh, at the reunion. I need that. I need that while they're eating their survivor pizza for someone to put their pizza down and just say, "Stop it!" Remember that time you ran over my toe? 
I don't know if the animosity for Venus is strong enough for Tevin to do something like that. Like, I think, unfortunately, my read on the situation is that they have no respect for her. So, like, mm. they're not that worried about getting Lightable. her out. You know? Like, yeah. if like if she was – if they were worried about getting her out and they were like, no, this is the right move, they would have just – shifted the target off of Mariah and gone for her. You know what I mean? Like, I think that they are like, oh, you have no power here. So what, what does it matter? Like, it's not like she can get anything going in, in their minds. You know, I don't know what right. Venus is capable of. Hopefully that we can see her get some stuff going. But like, if I'm Tevin and I'm like, I'm a little worried and then Q and everybody gets there and I was like, what's going on with her? And you're like, yeah, she can't get anything going. Like, why are we going to waste our time when we, there's a bigger target in the other tribe that's a love tribe you know um so i could I see agree. her even slipping through this next vote too i don't know i would agree if the entire tribe wasn't talking about voting her out at this exact vote that we are like I'm talking about <laughs> yeah like you know they're already like you know, we would love to vote out venus like please let us vote out venus um so <laughs> i think that there is a world and it's not so much about like i dislike venus so let me screw her over from getting on the jury as much as is i would rather every single person over on that side be on the jury than i would rather this person that i've been beefing with for you know 12 days on the pre-jury sure. so let's send her out of here so she can't you know screw me over with a vote at the end no fair fair enough i i want to talk a, a little bit more about the challenge is that okay let's do it yeah oh, okay so we have the one-on-one -on -one competition it's like a like a relay race of sorts right they can't get through the next obstacle until the last person gets through the obstacle to the point where they have to do parts of the puzzle separately uh a lot of puzzle talk on twitter that i just don't have the energy to read into right now scally but i want to talk more about the human ladder that these survivor players made to get them up on that ball the orange team maggie have you seen anything like this this is survivor ingenuity I, I, this is also like, I watch him, like, I break my knee, I'm going to break my elbow, I'm going to dislocate <laughs> my shoulder. Like, I, that's just not, no, you know what's going to happen is I'm going to be so useless that the biggest guy in the tribe is going to throw me around like a rag doll. Like, they're going to throw <laughs> me up there at first, and I'm going to be up there like, let's go, team. Like, I'm so useless in something like this. It's so hard. It's so, so hard. I watch it and I'm like, oh my gosh. And they have their, muddy boots on each other's shoulders and it's like so i'm like oh my gosh i mm, need a massage cool. just watching you guys scally do you remember when jonathan from survivor 42 was the ladder <laughs> i have heard i've heard about <laughs> jonathan is the ladder um i do get the reference uh, <laughs> um but i don't know i did see Jem maybe pull a screenshot of where it may have looked uh in order to hold maria up that mariah maybe looked like she was choking her out <laughs> at a moment <laughs> in the challenge. Uh, <laughs> uh, there we have it. <laughs> so I don't know how much uh, you were really helping her there, but <laughs> it's an interesting screen grab. <laughs> okay. She's, she's holding her shoulders so that they don't pull her off while trying to pull up Charlie. That's got to be it. Now, if it was Venus, I might have thought that she was getting choked. Or strangle, like it, like it. And, and it depends on which whoever's in which position. Because honestly, I think either one of them, like you know. But yeah, I think this is so good. This is so good because when you have a tribe that you say, "Oh, they're the smaller tribe. They're not as strong," and then they do something like this, Maggie, they almost won, and I would have lost. My Twitter would have exploded. It would have been done. Yeah, it would have been amazing. But this is like okay. This might be a niche reference. I don't know if you guys will know. Like, have you ever gone tubing? I've been tubing. Sure. Do you know what that is? Like, like tubing behind a boat, like a speedboat? No, no I've not done it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just like, I watch these challenges and it involves these people like pulling themselves up from things. And all I can think of is like me as a 15 year old hanging off of a tube, trying to like pull myself back on and just absolutely failing and literally being like, I can't do it in the water. <laughs> I'm like, that would be me in these challenges. It's so, so crazy. And I really, I, for a second, I thought they were going to win. I was oh. very, very into it. It would have been too good. I'm sorry. That uh, is the story we need. We we got a tribe that was so mismatched, uh, like height wise. Where this is the first time we've ever seen that happen together. Where people were just going down the road saying how tall they are in comparison to the other tribe. And I thought that was really cool. I wonder who prompted this. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> they all like called it out. Like, oh no, this is exactly how big of a disparity there is between these two teams.
Mm -hmm. is, is the is that the point here of mergatory to make sure that the merge boot gets an extra shot like are we are we trying to save the uh you know the potential merge boot the person who we know like this person has to win or they're gonna go home or is that what we're trying to do it because if so it's working it's definitely working yeah that's a good point i do think that there is a number of twists that people have pointed to maybe helping the same archetype over and over uh and it does seem to be working <laughs> I do i do not disagree mm -hmm. yeah the, the jonathan would have been great in this challenge i'll just say that you know <laughs> and was <laughs> <laughs> yeah as a whole ass ladder um <laughs> So uh, let's see. What else? We've talked about rumored billionaire Liz Wilcox. Maggie, anywhere where, where Liz wins the seal money at the end of the season, or is that just over, overkill? I don't think that Liz is going to win the seal money. I can't see that happening. The rich keep getting richer. I'm telling you, it's, it's coming. Liz Wilcox for seal money. She's getting the most seal <laughs> money, too. Like, you know, it's in tears now, right? She yeah, the tears of like, the, it's like the person who Sia thinks deserves the money the most, then her favorite person, and then like, you know, the third person. You're like, what? I think Liz is getting like the third person money. Like, how did you get it? Oh, oh, good question in the comments. It's who will get the Liz money at the end of the season, Scott? Obviously, Liz too. Sorry. Oh, yes. I jumped in. <laughs> Sorry, I completely Wait. cut you off, Scally. No, no. No, Liz too. So Liz would give the money to Mariah. Isn't that just like Yes? Liz is I like it. the other Liz happy. Come on. Nobody loves Liz more than Liz. I like it. Mm -hmm. I do think that Liz could get the money from Sia as an investment in the company. Um, I do mm -hmm. think she could be impressed and want to invest, but otherwise, yeah, I would think it would be a struggle. And the Chandelier Company, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. Um, people in the chat are saying Liz is going to get loan Sia the money. That actually kind of makes a little bit more sense because Liz has all the money. All of it. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah. Well, I guess the winner of this season might end up with more money than uh, than Liz, but uh, we we shall see. We shall see. Um, there was also a fun moment where Tevin starts speaking in tongues. I tried to transcribe it. That, I thought that was a very fun moment because the captions managed to catch it. Now, they didn't translate it, but they definitely typed out exactly what it was that Tevin was saying. He was very happy for this merge, Maggie. What do you think about Tevin? We haven't really talked about Tevin yet. So Tevin this season, is he one of your faves? I love Tevin. I, if I was out there, Tevin would be my guy. He reminds me of all my friends. Like, I think he's a musical theater actor. Like, Te Tevin and I would get along immediately, like, right away. Um, I think that Tevin is really smart. So he might be somebody down the line that I would be looking at as like, let me get you out before we got to make this fire. But um, no, I, I love Tevin. I think that he's great. We, we have not talked about the thing that I did text you guys that I did really want to talk about though. Can, we, can we just discuss that? I just do want to say in terms okay. of Tevin, <laughs> that you know the episode start the season started out super positive for Tevin. I do think the general fan base has turned a little, and where I'm just like, you all want villains, and you can't handle Tevin, <laughs> like of all people, like <laughs> this is the this is like a, a line for you. Okay, um, I I think Tevin is super fun and bringing drama, so like I am very much here for Tevin. Yeah, yes. and also he's very strategic. Like he's good mm -hmm. at the game. Mm -hmm. No flaws yeah, thus above. far. Mm -hmm. what's not to like scally you even picked him for your iconic season tweet of this person is not getting voted out of survivor uh take us through these moments scally how do you select who your tevin of the season will be uh it's the hardest moment of the uh biannual year <laughs> <laughs> twice <laughs> a year you're in hell yeah. <laughs> yes, it, it's awful. Um, <laughs> I have previously had uh, one other contestant similar to Tevin where they opened the season in a similar fashion in a confessional. Uh, I did not ultimately pick them uh, where there was another great alternative, but I couldn't let that happen twice. Tevin was a standout right away, but there are, I'm looking at truly at least half of a cast where I'm just like, oh, I love all, I love all of you, uh, if not like, uh, and I do not know what the correct decision is here. Uh, I have screenshots of about seven people probably still sitting on my phone where they could have been the pick. They could have been. Mm. It's almost And I do, I will say, <laughs> I will back Scally up on this. I have been with him on a premiere night and said, who are you going to pick? And he says, I genuinely don't know until the episode's over. Like, I, I don't know. As mm -hmm. how, I would have pushed Banu. I really would have. And Scally, don't get me wrong. For at least three weeks, you would have had hella content for that. You know, like that would have been the hottest take on Twitter. People would be angry in your mentions. But you picked Tevin. And I feel like it was a great pick. A little safe, maybe. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
it would have been a great way for me to differentiate myself from Brian Cohen on Twitter going with Bono. <laughs> uh, but uh, otherwise, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. On a scale, a little... on a scale of Brian Cohen to Brian Scally, where do you <laughs> fall on your feelings about Bono? <laughs> I'm definitely on this Banu, like a, I like pro Banu side of the spectrum. Okay. I would, I would Scally on that mm. one, but I know, I know that that's a hot take, Maggie. Um, Banu's gone, Maggie. But what did you think about him while he was here? What a three episode arc! Four episodes. <laughs> it was a three episode arc that went on for four. Man, it was, it was so much Banu. It was yeah, all the Banu. I'm it sorry. was. I loved it. I loved it. It was all I loved the it. Banu. I loved it. Maggie, you talk about moments you watch back on television and you just like, I could not have watched myself do that on TV when Banu fell to his knees and starts begging for Stop his it. life in the game. Stop. I was like, I, okay. I'm telling you, my skin would have just fallen off and I would have dissolved into <laughs> dust and then just got washed <laughs> away into the ocean because I'd have been so awkward in that moment. But I mean, Chappelle. It's probably the highlight of the season so far. I'm not going to lie to you. Chappelle, I, I I, mean, it is, it it was truly like, what is going on here? Like you said, you wanted to turn into dust. I was on the couch and wanted to turn into dust. <laughs> I think that that's part of it too, is that like the reason people were not into Banu is because they actually have empathy and their empathy mm -hmm. was so it, it's like watching it's like watching some people can't really watch the office because michael scott like makes them be like so i can't awkward. like i can't do this it's so awkward and like watching banu i think was part of that for people they were like i can't i can't do this i can't i can't be a part of this you know like whatever's going on like i i don't know why this has become my business but i don't want to be a part of this yeah. um there were but points. yeah, I just think I, I think that the thing, <laughs> my feelings about Banu was just that he took up a lot of time on the show, and maybe he had a little bit extra. He had like a full extra episode that maybe we didn't need, uh, in my opinion. But mm -hmm. you know, but God stepped in, Scally. Uh, yeah, it was God's will. Banu stayed. <laughs> 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 Look, he prayed. The, they were answered. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's not Banu's fault. <laughs> or any right. of the above. Whether no, they are, no. uh, that happening. And, um, and <laughs> as our pod father once said, I didn't know that God had a rooting interest in Survivor. But guess what, know. Rob? Here he is. Here's the rooting interest. It took you happy now? 46. And, he, <laughs> and, and she became invested enough. Um, but I, uh, I don't know. I think Bonnie was super fun and i think that bonu like that's who bonu is he would not like look back at it and be like i am embarrassed like that's me you're getting me yep <laughs> mm -hmm. i agree um, yes uh i think the other people that we've lost pre-merge have also kind of had a lot of screen time uh can we we can't ignore jelinski maggie what do you think about the legend himself i love Jelinski. I mean, I was going to say earlier when you were like, who would be like the pick that is so niche that you're like, what? And I'm so sorry. It's Zeke from Survivor Philippines for me. <laughs> yeah, Zane. Like, oh, Zane. Oh, my God. I can't even think of his name correctly. But all I could think of is him with a painted blue and white face running <laughs> in his jeans. Like, oh, my God. It's so good. And Oh, Jelinski really was was giving that. And I, I will never forget sitting with Lincoln on Survivor premiere night and us watching it and our jaws just dropping further and further and looking at each other. I mean, like, he has to go home, right? Like, I, I think he has to go home. It was just so, so, so good. Jelinski is a legend in my eyes. Absolutely. And look, you want to know why I love Jelinski so much? We got the exact right amount of Jelinski. <laughs> One and done. Yep. <laughs> Scally, an hour of half of Jelinski, but we have uh, a tweet that lives on. Jelinski called himself a legend, but uh, Jill, if you could queue up uh, our tweet. So I, I believe, is, is this the episode titles have now been re renamed? What exactly is going on in this tweet? Jill, uh -huh. do you have it for me? Um, now, this is a screenshot. It says, has the title this week, Survivor CBS episode, been noticed and discussed yet? S season 46, episode 7, episode several. 
Is that Ooh. real? <laughs> it's just well, I, I mean, this. Scally, is this real? You, you're look, you're our Twitter correspondent. Tell us what is this? Uh, look, I fallen for a fake before, or made a fake maybe before. Um, <laughs> 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 but episode several, I could see like a Q dropping this reference. I could see this being real. Mm -hmm. I, that is absolutely hysterical and i pray in my soul that that is real look he said they were talking about me well into the merge if they try to name that merge tribe several i'm i'm gonna lose it i'm gonna lose it i'm done it's america it's america all over again scally <laughs> i need it i <laughs> am so here on several like let delinsky live on bring him back next mm -hmm. season yes <laughs> Build a statue, yeah. build the big giant head, Maggie, and let Jelinski just, uh, that is the island of the idol. He is the idol. As, as also, the fact that his name is Jelinski, like, it's just perfect. perfect. I'm, I'm telling you, we got the exact right amount of Jelinski. Yes, and we also <laughs> get Jelinski on Twitter. Uh, this is a tweet from David C. Jelinski. It says, big announcement coming next week in honor of episode several. Ooh. Look. What do you mean by that, Jelinski? You know, I, Scotty, I'm worried. I'm concerned. What is this? I know. Is it like, are we going to get episode several merch or something? Like, what is <laughs> yeah. going on? I think that, that might be where we jump the shark. <laughs> like, yeah, I would agree. It's mm -hmm. the right level right now. I, I, I'm curious to see what this announcement is, though. Okay. So we're getting the several t-shirts, the matching several hats that we're going to wear. We we need several of them for this for this panel, right? Mm -hmm. Or yep. well, we, we And then we need four more people because seven equals several mm -hmm. where did y'all land on that debate by the way maggie is seven rule is seven several that's the same thing no he just got confused because seven starts with an s and so does several right they start the same <laughs> scally people in the chat said that he had some points no it's not several. <laughs> no, no. It's like, just wrong no there's no points. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> People said it. I'm telling you, check the comments. Watch. Watch this. Kelly, who if, said that? <laughs> when you listen to this, if you're watching this on YouTube, put in the comments. Seven mm. equals several. I, I seen it, Scally. I saw it with my own eyes. Yeah. Um, I need it. I need that episode to be called several. I do. Oh, it's my confirmed. God. Yes. 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 That is Survivor, you've done it again. You did it. <laughs> You've done it again. You did it. It's hit. This is it. This is it. I, it's, it's giving a lot of Gabon energy, Maggie. I don't know, man. I don't know either. And, you know, I'm going to reserve energy. On, on, or I'm going to reserve my opinion until the season's over. Okay. Mm. But if we end up with a Bob Crowley win, I think that it's going to be <laughs> very obvious what, what season. I think if Liz wins. No, because Liz is the Susie of the season. Um, mm. I don't know who would be the Bob Ooh, Crowley winner. Who's the Bob? I don't know if there is a. Can we bring back Bono? You know, I'm gonna look. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't look. Maybe that's how dare you do that to Bob Crowley? <laughs> <laughs> I think that remains right. to be seen. <laughs> I don't know if we have a Bob Crowley yet, but I, I just, I don't know. I felt like last season gave me a lot of good Gabon vibes. Like it was cracked. It was a season of I, just like, what's no. happening. Last season was so good. Last season was phenomenal. It's my favorite season in the new era by far. I think it's a top 10 season of just Survivor overall. I love D as a winner. I think that she was an absolutely fantastic winner, like everything about her, because she was a really flawed winner, but she knew how to play to her strengths. And I really, really loved everything that D brought to the season. And I think that that's maybe why – sorry, did I freeze for a second there? No. No. Oh, um, but I think that maybe that's why, like, this season I'm feeling a little let down because I really felt like last season was full of heat and it was, like, a little messy. But this is just feeling like a lot of mess and not a lot of exciting mm. emergent gameplay at the mm. moment. At the moment. Mm. Well, so I don't know, Maggie. You're saying D that as if a bone isn't one of our favorite seasons, Scally. It's a different, it's, it's a different there. thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's up there. I mean, I like that even that episode several will be sending several people home. Uh, so <laughs> I think that might be uh, where it might come in. 
Oh, several people. I mean, we get two. So a couple episode. Right, couple. that's a couple. There's a couple. <laughs> no, I mean, we would we would need seven people to go home for there to be a true several, right? Several is, is now the new dozen. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think Maggie's down. <laughs> I don't think it would be awful to kind of you know weed out a few people, but I do love that Jelinski's power lives on. Um, we haven't talked about Tim's alliance, his plus one alliance, and we haven't talked about the merge feast. So let's get into merge feast first, Maggie, because I know you have some strong opinions about this. What exactly was happening during the merge that made you say, huh? Or was it like, oh. it really wasn't a merge. I guess it was the split merge, mergatory feast. Yeah, I mean, look, I get it. Everybody's starving. OK, you, you haven't eaten in 15 days or however many it is, especially anybody on the Purple Tribe. Like they literally have had nothing. I take the 12 seconds to run into the ocean and get that mud off your hands and off your face and out of your hair because not because of aesthetic purposes, even not because I'm like, ew, ew, like you look all muddy eating. When you get sand and mud in your mouth and you chew on it, even if it's one little grain, that's all that you can think of while you're eating. I'm like, what? we're not going to wash. We're not even going to try to rinse our hands. We're just going to be full mud putting the sandwiches in our mouth. I was like, come on, guys. Let's get it together. Let's jump in the water, wash off the mud, get out, eat our food. So, Maggie, I do have news. Oh, yeah. Uh, we should it know turns about this. out. <laughs> Siga themselves, uh, one gem has been on Twitter and let everyone know that they actually did add sand on purpose to their rice because it gave it a little bit of salt and crunch. A little texture. For the a, little, texture. a little texture, Maggie. They didn't like sprinkle a little, <laughs> a little sand in it. Maggie, you look shocked right now. That's disgusting. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with them? It was look. on purpose. Other Survivor players were like, I'm sorry, what? And Jim was like, no, no, no. Y'all should try sand in your food. And I think they're all thinking, we had it. We didn't want it, but we had it. Maggie, your face is priceless right now. I'm like genuinely horrified. Also, like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Anybody on that tribe can't win now. Um, they're <laughs> absolute psychopaths. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. What if... You finish the entire season and you don't know that they've been putting sand in your food on purpose. You just thought it's a product of being on the island. And then you find out from Twitter that Jim has been putting sand in there like sand bay. Just put sprinkling sand into your food uh, behind your back. I, I feel I, like at that point, ring the bell. I'm on Jerry Springer. See? Uh, yeah, I mean, at that point, I'm like, and I voted you out for a reason. Because <laughs> <laughs> we've been saying that people should just go with the flow on their tribe. But when my tribe mate is putting sand in the food and I have to be like, yes, I love this sand. It tastes great. <laughs> <laughs> we all love this sand so much. They couldn't wait to vote her out. <laughs> yeah. OK, her her being like, we did it. It was so good. You're right. Everybody was probably like, and she's making a rice sandy. We got to get her out of here. Uh, you oh, know that was definitely the conversation no. it, it would be on site if somebody put mm -hmm. sand in my rice and was like mm, delicious <laughs> no yeah i know the conversation went just like that i was like well who do we vote out this week do we vote out you know ben do we vote out jim someone's just said you know she she just won't stop putting sand in the food like <laughs> dear god <laughs> She's got a I, digging. Like, they don't even know if it's her, but I'm sorry. I'd risk it. I'm like, yeah, let's just vote her out. I'm sorry. She's poisoning us, essentially. And we she, have to smile through it. She made them dig in the poop hole. And she put <laughs> sand in their rice. Yeah. That sums it yeah. Up. Look, <laughs> I'm not saying that they were right to vote her out. But <laughs> I'm not <laughs> saying they were wrong. Exactly. Their points the being made up. Keeps, the evidence keeps mounting, let me just say. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is the craziest thing I've heard in a really long time. Just a little crunch. I, that's all. I'm like genuinely shocked to hear that. Yeah. Uh Miss Brown Sugar in the chat says it's kind of genius. Let someone bottle it and charge forty dollars for a Fijian sand salt. It's a thing. <laughs> wow. It could be. It would sell. It would sell. TikTok it would shop, definitely sell. Open it up. <laughs> yeah, it would definitely sell. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. So that said, 
I do want to talk about some alliances, specifically the plus one alliance. Uh, we've seen this tactic happen on past seasons of reality TV, a la like a big brother where you go get your plus one, maybe even a, you know, survivor token teens, you know, where we have the exile alliance and we go get our plus ones. But this time in particular, it feels like there was a plan. Q was involved in the plan. Hunter was involved in the plan and Tim was involved in the plan. And the plan was to go get your plus one and have them add it to this secret alliance so that we could run the game from within, like a little strike force. Uh, but but when Q asked Tim about this whole thing, and he asked Maria about it, who with Tim's plus one, they had very different answers. Skyly, it looks like Tim just did not tell Maria this was going to happen. Yeah, I think that it's very questionable, except when you remember that the whole tribe apparently does every single thing of every moment of the day together. So it would have been kind of tough for him to be like, okay, tribe, actually, I formed an alliance and I'm bringing Maria in on it. So good news, <laughs> everyone. Um, that probably would have been a difficult conversation to have. Um, but it's so I can see it from that perspective. I think where it worries me a little more is where Tim was saying, like, no, this was on purpose and I just didn't want to commit too early. Right. Well, right. Do we think that was real? And that's what I'm saying. I don't know if he's saying like, oh, I did this on purpose, right? Like, it was, yeah. I, it's just exactly what I should have done. I definitely didn't drop the ball on telling my alliance mate that they're in my alliance. Um, but, the, you know, you can look at it both ways. You know, Rob said on the know it all that he feels like Tim is passive, like a passive player. Mm. I haven't seen much of an example that Tim knows what he's doing. Oh. I'm not saying he doesn't know what he's doing, but I'm saying I have... I it remains we'll to, to it. be seen if yeah mm -hmm. I, I would still like to see it you know I, I haven't seen enough to say like he doesn't know what he's doing like he's floundering out there but I haven't seen enough to make me be confident that Tim is like a solid good survivor player I'm like I got my eye on you I think you might not be great at this <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll see imagine imagine someone coming up to you from a completely different tribe and saying hey did this person that you're loosely working with tell you that you know that we're all working together and you're their number you're you're his number one? Because Maria looked shocked. She's like, I I'm your number one? I was this close to voting out Ben last round. Like, how am I your number one? And then and then him being like, Oh, well, you know, Maria's just like she's the type of person where I want her to feel it out for no, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. <laughs> you got caught, you feel silly. Now you gotta say why you did the thing that was wrong in my in my opinion that's what that was my read on the situation it's like i'm big brother when somebody gets in a fight with someone or like gets all upset about something and then like they're in their confessional and they're like oh you know i had to act really upset because i just wanted to like make it and it's like no it's fine you got upset or you, you got caught you feel silly and you have to come up with a reason why you did something that was not in your best interest and you misplayed mm -hmm. yeah scotty it, it Tim should have moved a little bit faster. Well, the thing is, I think even the editors would have liked that because there was a lot of like, <laughs> why was yeah. none of this shown previous? Like, why did Tim say Maria was his number one? Like, why didn't we have him like relaying any of, the, any of that information? And like, I'm annoyed that if it's going to be shown in a flashback in a separate episode, and Maria's also like, I don't know what's going on here. Like, why is this <laughs> happening? So uh, the, the footage did not exist was the real answer. Yeah, yeah it's that's tough. what I'm saying. It's giving... Tim? <laughs> like, <laughs> Tim, did you? Is, is Tim Bob Crowley? I'm joking. Okay. So, <laughs> well, we were looking for one. I'm just saying, <laughs> Tim, we would like to see a little bit more active yeah. gameplay because this definitely felt like Q showed up with a plan. He's like, all right, we set this thing in motion. Hunters told Tevin. Tevin's like, I'm good with that. This sounds perfect to me. Only to get to Maria and, um, yeah, uh, Maria is like, oh yeah, he he told me about the alliance? Question mark. Oh, I'm his number one. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I'm definitely his number one. Sure, sure. I'm definitely that's me. Tim's number one. Maria is going to flip on this alliance. I, I'm calling it right now. This is Tim is not her number one, and she is not down for this, Kelly. Yeah, and whether like that flip is successful or not, I think remains to be seen. But I don't think she's going along with this plan, especially when the alliance is doubting the person that brought her in. This is not a stable <laughs> landing spot for her to uh, uh, show up to. So I think that she is very correct in reading that she should be going a different direction. Mm -hmm. But where does she go? We shall see. Uh, I think in future episodes, maybe Maria will be somebody who, like a force to be reckoned with. She has Charlie 
I I think that there's a good path to victory here for uh, for Maria Maggie. Yeah, I I do too. I was gonna say like a really easy person for her to pick up and sort of build you know a resistance with is Venus, but Venus voted against Charlie. Like they're not gonna want to work with her. You know, it's just ah. Uh. Yeah, I would say that was lack of other options, but they're about to go into a split tribal thing next week, so we'll see how that goes yeah. too. <laughs> Ooh, okay, yeah, because I I have a really hard time picking the person who will go and it not be Venus. Like, how does Venus survive this next round? It There has to be something crazy that's going to happen for her to make it through this because both sides, like, everyone's going to Tribal Council. There'll be limited options. Maybe we see Venus the Challenge Beast. Maybe that happens. I would like to see that, Maggie. I, me too. Why did Maria use both of her votes to vote out Gem? Why? It, and I'm sorry. I do think Maria's a good game player. A horrible move. Absolutely horrible move. What was she thinking? Why would sand. you do that? What the sand? What, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I don't understand it. She could have been, like, even they know what's going to happen in the new era, okay? They know that they do a mergatory, and then we split into two tribes. That's when you save your extra vote. When you might have be outnumbered on your tribe, that's what you keep your extra vote for. I'm so confused. Why did she do that? And what, so we just don't get to know why. The editors never want to explain to us why. I'm annoyed about that. I would like to know why. Scally, do you know why? No clue. <laughs> no clue. And that's the problem. No. <laughs> yeah, I like I get the perspective of like it can paint like a target on your back. You're about to go into merge. You want to get rid of it. But like multiple other people already have them. Like you said, there is a perfect opportunity for you to be using it where you could just throw it away then instead. Mm -hmm. uh, huh, Scally, did, did Hunter get his vote back after this? Because uh, we saw that he didn't have a vote until he goes to. like, But now he's officially fulfilled the prophecy, right? He went to tribal council. He didn't have a vote. Can he have it back now? He got his vote back for that, but he still had lost his vote for putting all the seasons in the completely wrong order. So I think that yeah. was the issue of where he didn't have a vote. Uh, so I think next round he'll be good. Question Hopefully. Mark? Yeah. I, I really have a big issue with them. I don't mind them taking away people's votes. That's annoying to me, but fine. What I do hate is them tying the vote to the shot in the dark. Like you taking away my vote and then not allowing me to play the shot in the dark, you're eliminating the whole point of the shot in the dark. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm supposed to be able to play that when I have nothing else going for me. And like we saw with Banu, sometimes nothing else includes a vote. That is the thing that is going to save me. And a lot of times you can't even control whether or not you lose your vote because a random rock draw puts you up gives a puzzle that you were never going to complete no matter how much time you got. Oh, it, was, it wasn't gonna Chappelle. be it wasn't gonna work out. What's up, Max? The game is a monster. <laughs> the game is a monster. They we saw the puzzles. This game is now starting to lean toward um super fans, you know, giving them a little something, something. We saw Hunter really struggling to put these seasons in order. Maggie, as someone who watched the first 20 seasons in a row, you see them. You could do this, right? Oh, yes, I could. I well, I was nervous when I saw them. Like, I was nervous because it was just the emblem, like the title pictures. I was worried that it wasn't going to be labeled with like the name of the seasons. And so that was making me a little nervous. But then when I saw that, like all of the names, I could have easily done that. I could have done that with my eyes closed. I could probably do it now with my eyes closed. I could probably name them all in order. Yeah, I think it, it was also placing the 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 logos as well, Scotty. But the logos typically pretty much tell you. I'm sure it's like the name of the season's on the logo, right? That's what I yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I tried without the name this week. I was like, I'm a little curious, and it was not easy. Let me tell you that much. Um, but I was like, I think I could do mostly the boot orders based on like if you give me the names, I might be able to put a lot of those in order. I get yeah. a little lost like mid thirties because I didn't finish all of those seasons. Like I didn't watch healers, hustlers. I didn't watch that. I didn't watch. I um, um, <laughs> what's the other one? The 35. Game check? Oh, you didn't, you didn't watch a uh, window season. You didn't watch. Uh, no, I, I didn't. Ghost I didn't. Island. So like I, so there, some of those I would, I got a little confused, but I do think that I would be able to put like knowing the order of the winners, like heroes, hustlers was before gang. Ghost Island, right? That was 34. Mm -hmm. 35. Okay, see? 35. Okay, but well, I, I knew that. So, see? I would have been fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just saying. But I, we found out, and Hunt, Hunter did a mid-season interview with Dalton Ross uh, recently, which, let me just talk about this. 
since when do we allow the Survivor players to do whole ass interviews right in the middle of the season, Maggie? This is why we can't believe everything we see because this person is incentivized to lie to us, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't think that while you're filming a show, you should be able to do an interview with another news outlet. Like, I, I don't know that I agree with this decision making by production. And I'm not saying Dalton Ross is all of his articles are amazing. He does so much for the community. Absolutely. But like, I don't know what's going on here with this. This feels like a very interesting production decision. It's wild. I thought that well, they have like a, a ban on this type of stuff, Scally. Well, it's almost like maybe we could have shown it on the show. <laughs> like, yes, <laughs> that's what I'm maybe saying. We have, if we thought it was so important, we could have done it ourselves. Um, <laughs> I don't know why now, why Hunter specifically, because you're going to get a very different opinion from every single person on that tribe of exactly how it lays out. So it is a very confusing decision from uh, for me, at the very least. Scally, is this a spoiler? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, Mag Maggie, is this Hunter the winner? So we need to know what Hunter's thought process is. Maybe. No, 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 no we don't <laughs> like that. We don't like that. Please don't spoil the show for us by getting us interviews and inside information. That's why we like our long form interviews that y'all used to let us have at the end of every season where we talk to the people. So we didn't have to do this because now I'm starting to question everything. I Hunter would be a a good survivor winner, Maggie. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you sound <laughs> underwhelmed. Yeah, I mean, like, the guy who won 39 was a good survivor winner, too. It's just like, you know, I, I don't know. I, 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 he I, seems like okay. a really good guy. I just, I, I want, like, more excitement, maybe. Like, uh, the thing that I really, the thing about D that made me so excited and the thing that I really, really liked about watching her path to victory is that D was a flawed player. Like she was not a perfect survivor player, but she did something that was so good in what every winner needs to do, which is she talked about herself with so much confidence that she made the other people around her think like, oh, she knows what she's doing at all times. Every decision that she makes is the right one because of how confident she was in her decision making. And there were some moments where decisions could have gone one, like one of two ways. And the reason that she was able to wiggle out of them is because she spoke with such confidence. And I really, really loved that about her. And it didn't feel false. Like it didn't, it, it felt to me like gameplay that she would be like, yeah, no, this is just what's going on. And she was never really in the confessionals. Like, oh, I don't know if this is right. But she was in the confessionals. Like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. We'll see, you know? Um, and I think mm. that I just haven't gotten enough from Hunter to know that. But also, D really started heating up in the, in the back half of the season. You know, like, at this point, I think all we had gotten from D was her toe. So, who knows? Yeah. 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 I, well, that's the thing, is uh and this is nothing like against hunter like so he seems awesome and like great yeah. personality very well equipped for survivor i have one percent more confidence than i did in the preseason that hunter would be a great winner because hunter has not yet voted yet <laughs> like we'll yeah. see how it <laughs> yeah. comes when hunter starts playing the game of survivor like obviously he has mm -hmm. you know ingratiated himself extremely well in the tribes and like all of the dynamics are like there but what does the rest of the season look like? Because that is a much bigger part of why I would say someone was a good or bad winner. I do think it's a choice going to somebody who hasn't even voted yet and getting their takes on the mid season of, uh, of the show, you know, uh, Jill, if you can show me that. Yeah. Show me that interview one more time, Jill. And if you could scroll down to the bottom, cause then Hunter did give us a little insight. Uh, it says, finally, you got eight out of 20 survivor logos in the correct uh, chronological order. Explain yourself. In short, Dalton Ross is asking Hunter, what happened? How did you mess this up? Scally, Hunter said he confused Micronesia for Kara Moen. Now, I just feel like the man should be booted from the show because of that. <laughs> I love confusing like early seasons of survivor where they're not in hd <laughs> for a much later <laughs> season i think that's one of the biggest giveaways that i thought was interesting if you don't know the exact order that's fine but it didn't look like things were just one off to me so uh i'm a little confused well, well that's the thing so hunter says if you shift the order around if you put kara moen 
uh, where Micronesia is, he got all the subsequent seasons, I guess, after Karamoan. So he's like Karamoan, and then he knew what came after Karamoan, and then realized, oh shit, Micronesia would have been first, but he knows the seasons that are after Micronesia. So look, he, it, he on this diagram, it says if the correct answer was A, B, C, D, E, blah, 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 all the way to T. Oh, goodness. It, uh, F, I, M, and T. And so had he switched them all around, they would have been fine, roughly. He would have probably gotten a few wrong as opposed to getting, um, what was it, 8 out of 20. Because 8 out of 20 is a big miss. Okay. You're like, I feel it. <laughs> well, if, you're, you're if Jelensky ass. stuck around, he would have won the game as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Period, Scally. Period. <laughs> if if Hunter goes pre-merge, no one's naming any episodes after him. That's all I'm saying. Je Team Jelensky. Okay. No, it makes sense. His his logic makes sense. It's just uh it's interesting. It is interesting, Ooh, but also a crime against humanity. <laughs> I remember Dalton doing a couple of these interviews in the seasons past. Who mm -hmm. was the mid-season interview last year? Do we know? Oh, I don't know. Let me see if I, I think can maybe find Jam it. Jam got one. Oh, for uh, Jam Jam season and not oh you oh I thought you meant for D season. I Let's think see. maybe oh. Jam Jam got one. I have like a vague memory of this. Maybe I'm totally making it up. Yeah, I have zero okay. memory. Okay, so I found on the Survivor Reddit, a place I've sworn to never go. Uh, mm -hmm. It says, who's done the mid-season interviews with Dalton Ross? Kind of a random question, but does anybody have the list? Now, do y'all want me to say the list? Or, I mean, like, cause it, a potential spoiler character. If I, if I just start naming all the winners, don't be mad at me. I'll be shocked if you do that. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think that you would even offer it up if it was all literally right. running down the winners. Okay, so for season 43... We have Cody. Cody was our mid-season okay. Survivor interview from that season. Cody did well, but he did not win. Season 44, Carolyn Weiger. Carolyn, mm -hmm. uh, finalist Carolyn, but also not a winner. And then uh, for season 45, financial analyst Emily Flippin. Ah, uh, so it's a fan fave. It is. Hunter, the fan thing. Okay, okay. And I wouldn't say that is like a disqualifier. Like Hunter right. can still win. You know, I just oh, don't. Okay. I don't yeah. read into this. Right, yeah. right. I'm, I'm reading into it. I'm sorry, but yeah. Survivor <laughs> Reddit showed up and gave us a little insight. I don't know. I think maybe, maybe are these all people who won the Sea of Money? I don't think Cody won the Sea of Money, but Carolyn and Emily probably definitely got a little some. Carolyn I won the Sea of Money. Okay. Yeah, I have to check on the Emily thing, but I don't know. I'll throw Emily a few dollars. I don't know. Hunter, Hunter might win this one and the Sea of Money. Sure. Well, I, Hunter seems like an amazing guy. Like, he mm -hmm. seems like he's incredibly community oriented and really nice and like seems like the perfect candidate for Sia Money. He he seems like a great guy. <laughs> I can see it. Mm -hmm. If he's I was out won. there, I'd probably want to work with him. I've seen a lot of polls where he has won player of the week every single week that this season has been on. So, uh, are you serious? I've seen it. <laughs> wow. The casuals love Hunter. You know, uh, in the chat, they're saying uh, Venus would have been a great interviewee as well. Um, I, I don't know about that. I think that Venus as an interviewee would be electric, but also Venus is going to spoil the season. She's about to tell you exactly what's about to happen and why all these people are dumb and all the stuff because she is dying to talk about it. The long form interview we eventually get from Rob and Venus. I need that. I need that soon. I don't mean I don't mean like a little hour that CBS allow. I mean if he has to wait a year till they till they, you know till they take their eyes off him a little bit and then give us a deep dive. I need her to be journaling all of these feelings because I need to hear them back because nobody is going to tell this story like Venus tells this story. I, yeah, Venus might have been Venus might have been the mid season answer, y'all. I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. Um I mean, she kind of knows Dalton picks them also. Uh, look, she kind of got a she kind of did an AMA anyway on, on Twitter, so we we got one essentially. It's disappeared, but we got it. That's what I was gonna say. Is uh, <laughs> there is a reason? Like, I would love the Venus interview. Like, you would all love the Venus interview, and like they can edit what is going to be written, and so like we don't have to get the spoilers. Um, but there's a reason that Hunter's getting the interview, and Venus's tweets are being deleted. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. These two people are not the same. <laughs> They're yeah. Just not. Okay. Listen, we've gone through Survivor Twitter. We've gone through, uh, well, most of Survivor Twitter, but we've gone through Survivor Twitter. We've gone through the show. There's one thing I wanted to say for last. Uh, Maggie, are you familiar with the Know It All's AI song? No. Should okay, I be? Sally, 
Scout, you saw this? Play it out. I want to hear it. <laughs> okay. Well, look, I didn't say I had it, but Jill, we have it. We have the footage. Oh. So if you want to pull this up for me, Jill, uh, let's just take a listen to, uh, let's take a look at this tweet. It says, um, y'all, this is not right. I entered song about Rob and Steven, the survivor know-it-alls, and AI went this hard. Oh, this is terrifying. Like, surely a net negative to society, but also so freaking funny. That's from Ochain0224, and they tagged Rob and Steven in it. So, for your listening pleasure, the Survivor Know-It-All's AI. Um, okay. thank you, Jill. <laughs> okay, so next time you're in town, Chappelle, that is going on the loudspeaker. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, it's about Chappelle o'clock. That song's coming yeah. up. Live We're gonna take some shots and we'll be dancing to the AI Know It All song. Uh, Scally, this was good. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. It was good. Yeah, I'm waiting for the edit that's going to be played in the gay bars because I could see it. <laughs> <laughs> Speed it up, throw a little bit higher of a beat. <laughs> I literally, Sally was about to say, like, all they got to do is put a little unts unts under it, and that remix goes hard. Mm -hmm. We'll be dancing to pieces. <laughs> there are a lot of downsides to AI, and that song is just not one of them. I'm sorry. Um, give give me the J Maya remix or something like that. I, I will be there. That's such a good song, and I think it's the perfect way that we can wrap up Club Condo for this week because I'm I'm gonna need Rob to play that at Club Condo every week. Uh, this has been so much fun, Maggie. Thank you so much for coming on. Ah, uh, thank you for having me. This feels like the perfect Survivor show for me to be on. I always kind of struggle during Survivor season to really find my place, like find the the Survivor that I really want to talk about. And Club Condo just feels like a great a great landing space for me. So thank you so much for having me. No, no, no. I thought about the people who have I've had the most fun with in the club, and Maggie, you were one of them, and the other oh was Scally. You know, <laughs> we, we <laughs> we've had some good times in the clubs, Scally. Yeah, <laughs> those will stay off. Um, <laughs> I have the pictures, and, and then paparazzi has some pictures of me and Maggie. It's a whole thing. Oh my god! But yes, that also is a story for off pod. Oh my god, this is embarrassing. Oh, uh, that picture, I'm Maggie. If anything, I'm embarrassed because <laughs> Bell is like really bad. Uh, Jill's actually <laughs> pulling it up. No, no, Jill. I'm mad about it. It's bad. Uh, but Scally, thank you for being here. Of course, I couldn't couldn't wait to have you on Club Condo. Oh, please. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed my visit so much. It's been so fun. Yeah. Um, I just knew it. Again, we had the club <laughs> going. Rob was out. So we needed to have the most fun possible. And this was a blast. Survivor 46 has been delivering plenty of club condo uh, content. And I, I really can't, I can't like, uh, I can't quantify how much fun it's been just talking about it on club condo. Cause there's so much, there's so much outside of Survivor right now with the Survivor 46 cast. Congratulations to Mary. And of course, and her marriage, Shannon has made the trip all the way from Australia from it. So, you know, it's a big, it's a big deal. Um, but this has been a great time. Uh, Sam and Rob will be back. Unfortunately, very soon. I'm, I'm joking. Sa Rob will be back. Sam will be back, unfortunately, very soon. And then we will, of course, have more Club Condo coming your way. But in the meantime, Scally, please tell the people where they can find you. 
Ooh, people can find anything I'm doing over on Twitter at Brian underscore Scally and on Twitch at twitch.tv slash B Scally. Myself and Matt Ligori are going to be talking about this season of the Challenge All Stars 4 over on the Free Agents podcast. So be sure to check that out. And uh, like I said, anything else will be on Twitter. Scally, how do you think uh, Venus would do on the Challenge? Uh, I don't know how she would do, but uh, I know how it would serve me. So um, I would be <laughs> very happy if Challenge USA 3 is a thing. Call her up. Bring Venus. Hey, you're not going to get an argument from me. Maggie, what about you? What do you have going on these days? Yeah, you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, threads at MLMorgan underscore. Um, same thing also on Venmo. Uh, just put that out there. <laughs> Um, but that's for Liz um, Wilcox if you're listening. Yeah, Liz, hey, <laughs> send some money to your girl. Prove it. Okay, prove, prove, prove all that money. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm talking a little bit about Big Brother Canada when there's stuff to talk about this season. So you might see me over there. Um, yeah, I'm around. And I'm glad that you are. Scally and Maggie, thank y'all so much for being here. As y'all know, you can find me here on RHAP every week talking about Rob on Club Condo. I mean, talking with Rob on Club Condo about Survivor, but then also talking about Below Deck with Sasha every Wednesday, live on YouTube at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and then uh, there's still the Nothing But Netflix podcast. Rob has been away, but Josh Wiggler has been tapped in and uh, subbing for Rob as we talk about the hottest shows on Netflix. And uh, you might be surprised to find out that uh, the newest release for Netflix was uh, 1998's Sex in the City. And so uh, Josh Wiggler and I talked about Sex in the City. It was my first time I, I ever watching believe, this show. I can't believe you didn't ask like resident white girl to come on and talk about sex in the city. I live in well, New York Josh's city. We had Josh's wife on. Well, we had Josh's oh, wife oh, okay. on as well. Okay. So, yes, yes. That's em fine. <laughs> Emily Fox was our uh, our resident I'm white woman. <laughs> so, I'm talking <laughs> shit before I even listen to the podcast. <laughs> It, look, it's all good. I learned so much out of one episode of Sex in the City, and I have oh. a ton of questions, Maggie. So maybe I'll just have to blow your phone up about that one episode <laughs> that I watched. But it was I a crazy time. I have a lot of feelings about Sex in the City, like a lot of Ooh. good, positive Ooh. feelings. Honestly, I, I, I right. discovered it as like a fourteen-year-old, and I remember it like blew my mind. I was like, "Women are like this. It's so fun." Like in I the was, city, yeah, in the city, oh. yeah. Well, check out Nothing But Netflix for my fresh initial reaction to Sex in the City, as well as the commentary from Josh and our guest, Emily Fox. Uh, and follow at Nothing But RHAP on Twitter to keep up with all the things we have on Nothing But Netflix. Also, you can find me on my own podcast. RecapKickback.com is where you can find Recap Kickback Podcast. It's me. It's me talking about stuff that I want to talk about. And it's a great time. Sasha and I just uh, did a rollout for our new season of Summer House, Martha's Vineyard, that Sasha Joseph and I will be covering over on Recap Kickback. So tune into that every other week for coverage of those episodes. We have the episodes one and two of season two already in your podcast feeds uh, and on uh, on YouTube. RecapKickback.com slash YouTube or YouTube.com slash at Recap Kickback will take you to all of that. Uh, also, every week, Mari and I talk about some more shenanigans on Recap Kickback on Thursdays. And so we assembled a panel last week to talk about Cowboy Carter. I got a very angry call from Bryce Isaiah the other day about why he was not on the panel. I had to remind Bryce that he did decline because he was busy. Um, and, so, and it was not my fault. But he had strong opinions about our takes. And you might, too. So check that out uh, on Recap Kickback. And then this week, I think we're dropping our podcast podcast about the movie Shirley on Netflix starring Regine King. Uh, so check that out and more by subscribing to Recap Kickback and following at Recap Kickback wherever you get your podcast. Until next week, for Scally, Maggie, and myself and for Sam and Rob if they ever come back. Thank you to Jill as well. This has been a great time at Club Condo, but we will see you all next time. Peace! <laughs>